The Bow River is truly a blue ribbon trout stream. From the headwaters in the majestic Rocky Mountains where it flows past Banff and Canmore, Alberta, this section, known as the Upper Bow, is well known for its scenic beauty and large wild brown trout populations. As the river continues its course through the foothills and out onto the prairie, past the city of Calgary, the insect populations are more abundant, which allows the brown and rainbow trout to reach lengths in excess of 20 inches. We decided this would be the ideal river to float with our trade show contestant winners, Matt Coghill from Calgary and Terrace Rollick from Edmonton. We're also joined by Dan Bell, Dale Fresky, and Jeff Koschuk. big storm blowing in it looks really really bad right now holy cow getting a little chilly too I think what we'll do is go and hunker down for a while when we come back uh, hopefully the storm's blowing over and we get into some more fish Whew. A nice little fish. But he's a nice fish. Yeah. Okay, he's heading down in the water. Good shot of him there. And then when he's ready to go, he'll just take off. There he goes. Way to go. Right on. Thanks for coming with us today. Yeah, no problem. Well, it's your <laughs> first one. Yeah. All, All right. right. He's had a whole bunch on. Has he? Yeah. So he's lost some big fish. Yeah. You're going to have to pass the mic over because <laughs> we've got somebody else going to host the show so we can catch fish. Unreal. Well, we'll see if we can get Terrace into one. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well, they get a little more active, you think? No, yeah, we came in here. I think that they've started up. He's certainly been jumping around, so there. Oh, yeah. He's jumped five or six times, so he's been. And he went well down into my backing, so. He doesn't look that long, but pretty plump. Yeah, he does. Well, let's slide him into here. Okay, we'll land him over See here. See if we can get him up. All right. Yeah. He's nice and fat. Not healthy very long, fish. But nice and healthy. And you know, got the bugger, took it good. Yeah, right in. I was, I actually started stripping that really quickly. So earlier they were hitting it more on the down and across without pulling it, and now you're using a little, a little pull. A little technique on that to get him, uh, get him active know. to try and uh, provoke him into striking, and it did. That's about the fourth fish we've had on in this See, little Yeah, that's run, a nice so. ball. Nice ball. Yeah, nice and thick. Goes. There he goes. All right. All right. A good start, start for the yeah. day. Good. Way to go. Now we'll try a few more. We'll keep working that bugger. Maybe we'll get some more. Yeah. We're out. Terrace is working the run there, so we'll head over there and try some more. We've had quite a few fish on in that little run. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the bench. Well, today I'm going to tie you up a sculpin pattern. As fish get larger, they tend to key on sculpins because they are such a large food item. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie this fly. For the hook, we're going to use a size 4, 4x long streamer. We'll use some 3 out like done thread to tie with. We'll use some white marabou for the tail, some ginger white chenille for the body, some copper wire for the ribbing. For the back, we'll use some thin ginger rabbit zonker strips, some dark deer hair for the collar, and some white and tan sculpin wool for the head. 
I'm going to start the fly off by taking a white marabou feather and I'm just going to take the tips. I've actually cut the tips off it and I'm going to measure it up about the length of the hook and tie it in for the tail. We'll take some medium copper wire and wrap it in and what it'll be is a little bit of ribbing later to help tie in the zonker strip. I'm going to take some ginger and white corrugated chenille. I really like the corrugated chenille. It gives the, uh, the body a real differential in color from the brown and the white. And we'll tie it in. We'll take our chenille now and wrap forward to form the body. And keep the body fairly thick. Now I've taken a zonker strip. I like the, the thin brown zonker strip. We're going to lay it on our body and just extend the tail so they're about even both tails and we're going to lay the zonker strip onto our chenille body, take our copper rib and wrap it tight around and just pull it nice and tight on there. Pull back some more of our rabbit hair and keep progressing up tying in a nice rib body and our zonker strip. I've taken some deer hair and stacked it and I've got a little darker deer hair and I'm going to go down about a third of the of the hook and just tie the steer here and form a little collar. Get a little collar on the fly. Now I've taken some white sculpin wool and some tan sculpin wool and we're going to use it just the same way as we would with some deer hair to dub a deer hair head. What we're going to do is just wrap it on the top, take a couple of tight turns, pull the sculpin wool back and tie in front. And again I've taken my white and my tan sculpin wool and we're just going to take a loose wrap, incorporate it all in the head, tighten up, a couple wraps and pull back and wrap in front. To finish the fly off I'm going to take the fly out of the vise and what I'm going to do is just trim the head just like I would a spun deer hair head or any other head. Got all this extra wool and we're just going to take a large pair of scissors and start cutting and trimming the head. Well, there it is, the finished sculpin pattern. I really like to use this pattern through the spring and the fall and even in the winter when I happen to get out because those sculpins are readily available to the big fish. Give it a try, it's gonna work well for you.